Hey HMS modelers, this is Mike Bartles from the Hydrologic Engineering Center. In this video, we're going to continue discussing routing methods within HGC HMS by delving into the Muskingum Cunge routing method. Like I mentioned in past videos, got to give credit to Gary Bruner from HGC, who originally developed a good bit of the material within this lecture. By the end of this lecture, you should be familiar with the Muskingum Cunge routing method. I'll present an example computation. We'll discuss common parameter estimation techniques and calibration techniques. Finally, we'll finish up by comparing advantages and disadvantages when using this method. Recall that when using the Muskingum method, attenuation is achieved through numerical diffusion rather than physical. Kunj improved upon the original Muskingum method by setting this numerical diffusion to a physical estimate of diffusion. The resultant Muskingum Kunj method, as it's now referred to, has parameters that can be estimated from physical characteristics of the channel, allows for variable translation and diffusion, compares well with full and steady flow equations over a wide range of flow situations, and is independent of the simulation time step. This was a big leap forward and major improvement over the Muskingum method. I cannot stress that enough. Recall that all routing methods start with the equations of motion, which includes conservation of mass and momentum. The muskingum kunj method simplifies the continuity equation and neglects the acceleration terms within the momentum equation. These two equations can then be combined to form what's called the convective diffusion equation. The use of these simplifications make the method applicable to a wider range of scenarios than the Muskingum method, but it still cannot stimulate backwater effects. Also, it's still best applied to steep streams with slopes greater than 2 feet per mile and slowly rising hydrographs. This method requires an initial condition and multiple parameters. Length, friction slope, Manning's roughness, a space-time interval method and value, an index method and value, and a cross-section shape and parameters. This example shows how an inflow hydrograph shown in blue is translated and attenuated to produce the outflow hydrograph shown in black. The inflow hydrograph is translated in time by a varying amount. Translation isn't uniform and depends upon the inflow hydrograph and the physical characteristics of the region question. The inflow hydrograph is also attenuated. Similarly, the amount of attenuation depends upon the inflow hydrograph and the physical characteristics of the reach. Both reach length and friction slope can be estimated directly within HEC HMS. If you have associated the terrain data set with your basin model and your reaches are georeferenced. When estimating an initial friction slope, I usually equate it to the bed slope. However, if the slope is expected to vary significantly, it may be necessary to use multiple reaches with different slopes instead of just one. This is the case for the image to the right. Three different reaches, each with different slopes, are likely most appropriate for this case. The Manning's end roughness coefficient should be set as the average value for the whole reach. This value can be estimated using reference streams with established roughness coefficients or through model calibration. As an example, the image to the right is of a floodplain in Louisiana with a computed Manning's end of 0.11. A space-time interval and index method are required for each routing reach. These parameters are critical to ensure accuracy and stability of the method. For most applications, the AutoDX AutoDT method is adequate. Also for most applications, using the celerity index method and a celerity of 5 feet per second is adequate, but that can vary based upon the use case. HEC HMS allows you to specify the required cross-section information in the six ways that are shown here. I personally prefer to use the 8-point cross-section shape when using this method. Depending upon the chosen shape, Additional information will have to be entered to describe the cross-section. All the required parameters can be estimated using GIS information. In the example shown here, I took a field surveyed cross-section and simplified it to just eight points, which can be done fairly rapidly. Like all other routing methods, I like to start calibrating the Muskingum Kunj parameters by first trying to best match the rising limb of the observed hydrograph. Then I modify the parameters further in an attempt to match the observed peak flow rate. In this example here, observed flow is shown in black and computed flow is shown in solid blue. I've matched the rising limb decently well, but my computed peak discharge is too high. In this particular case, it would be best if I split the reach into separate pieces with individual parameters to better match the observed data. Remember to use multiple statistical metrics to gauge whether your model is accurate. A major advantage of this method is that the predicted values are in accordance with open channel flow theory. Also, you can simulate variable translation and attenuation effects. And finally, the required parameters can be estimated using physically measurable characteristics of the region question. However, this method is less parsimonious than simpler methods, 
and that more parameters are required. It also cannot simulate backwater effects and is only appropriate for use in streams with slopes greater than two feet per mile in situations with slow, slow rising hydrographs. In review, in this video, I introduced the Muskingum Cunge channel routing method. This method can recreate classical open channel flow phenomena and the required parameters can be estimated using physically measurable characteristics. This makes it a great choice for locations with little to no observed discharge data. However, this method does require more parameters than simpler methods, but I think the pros far outweigh the cons, and I personally use this method all the time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.